Episode 8, Warden and Colonial Officer Uniforms. Hello again, and welcome to another new video covering the influences and history of the equipment that inspired the design of the uniforms in the game Foxhole. This time we shall be covering a new set of experimental uniforms that have been recently introduced. These ones, of course, as the title suggests, belong to both the officers of the game's factions. I shall be very brief with the basic history of military officers, one of the primary cogs of the military machine. Officers who oversee administration at home, command in the field, and lead by example sometimes themselves on the front line of the battlefield. Whether a humble subaltern fresh from the academy, or a grizzled major close to retirement, an officer during a time of crisis both in real life and in the game, Foxhole, is always needed to take command. For years, player artists from both sides have been dressing up the avatars in such uniforms, and now they finally have a chance to don something like that in the game. Now, let's have a look at these uniforms, shall we? Warden Officers Regelia. We'll start off like always with me pointing out the awkward naming conventions of uniforms that Siege Camp have become addicted to. This implies this set of some sort of dress uniform for formal affairs, instead of the standard active service uniform we assume it to be alongside with all the other soldiers' roles and uniforms in the very game itself. But we'll put aside this penetry a moment and get into the details of the outfit itself. The headgear itself is obviously now inspired by the adapted Soft Horizon blue kepi worn by the French soldiers and officers during the First World War with a blank disc mounted on the front that could carry some sort of regimental or national symbol for the wardens. Moving down past the head, the officer uniform is a single-breasted style coat with a standing collar that clearly matches the 1877 19th century capote of the French army and the updated Great Moor model version right down to the same amount of buttons which you can see with the real-life model here. Examining each upper arm, we shall see on one a rather minimal looking shoulder board epaulette with uh, gold lace and on the opposite arm having some sort of fur pauldron mantle. In real life, lace and fur being worn on officer uniforms was incredibly common and fashionable, both with the infantry and cavalry, with European and fascist conscious armies of the world for at least two centuries. The strange fur shoulder pauldron might either be a reference to the palace, which was a short lace and fur pattern coat worn over the traditional Hungarian dolmen overalls of the Hussars, which was later adapted by most light cavalry units throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, which was fashionably worn on the shoulders, off saddle and on saddle for protection against sword blows. That or it simply could be part of a larger winter cloak for officer service winter gear. The single gold epaulette here would indicate the uniform to be associated with a more senior rank like captain. Interestingly, this fur is mounted on the belt strap of a Sam Brown looking belt and holster system with a box holster for the Warden and Finnish Luger pistol with 8mm pistol cartridge boxes attached. Oddly enough, despite being the more traditional of the two factions, the Warden officer is lacking a sword despite the colonial foe having their own. Now let's move on to the gloves. These seem to be quite shiny and high quality brown leather, and more or less, that is all we can really say about them, they're gloves. Moving down now to the legs, we see something quite unusual, a ward uniform with trousers that match the rest of the uniform camouflage scheme, and a new style of knee-high black leather boots. Knee length boots, the Napoleonic French cuirassiers. All that really is missing are the spurs for the horses. These boots themselves in real life were not very good for movement on foot. They were designed more for the protection of legs and fires from saber slashes than marching. I'm hoping this warden officer has a staff car handy with him at all times. Colonial officers attire. Now let's focus on those of the south. Once more sadly the colonial design leads too much into the recycling of assets and playing it safe. Which is a shame because with this outfit they could have been much more creative. Naming convention hints that the colonial rank structure may follow a more experimental classical republican hierarchy uh, compared to the traditional one, uh, the wardens, the post-feudal early modern system. To start with now the head, we see something new at least, if a cloth high peat cap with a brim, uh, spawning its own black metal badge insignia on the front of it. The hat itself seems to once again be a combination of Anglo and Russian influences with parts of said hat resembling the British 1905 pattern surface dress cap and the Imperial Russian M1907 peak cap, both from the Great War era. Moving down towards the model's torso area, we see the traditionally associated shoulder cape slash cloak, which seems to be a bit bigger and of much more high quality for the colonial officers, and it also seems to amusingly have its own high collar as well. Strangely though, you'd think it would be worn to cover the small and back of the shoulders, at least for the officers now of the army. 
Interestingly too, we see a sword being worn, the same sort of cloth bandolier style scabbard. The sword itself could be some sort of hanger cutter style blade, usually associated with European and North American huntsmen in the 18th century, which matches some of the colonial game law and aesthetic of the past. I am assuming the scabbard itself is a very simple mass produced wooded from one for the sake of the blade. On the left hand side of the usual cotton equipment belt, the colonials use a box shaped pistol holster for the more modern sidearm of the colonial officer. Strangely enough, like the warden officer, the box magazines for the ammunition for this pistol are awkwardly positioned at the small of the back instead of logically on the hips or the front for easy access. Sadly, no gloves for the colonial officer. He does not believe in such trite things despite carrying a possible ceremonial sword with him at all times. As for the legs, sadly, like the tunic shirt, they're the same old standard boring trousers and boot combination used for many of the game's uniforms. General conclusion. I have some very mixed feelings for these sets. In the general scheme of things, I do approve of such a concept, but I feel once again, a lot of time constraints or asset limitations have really made some elements of these uniforms just seem incredibly bland. I feel like always the colonial player base gets a lot let down more, uh, as the uniforms use a very common tunic style battle dress shirt, which while practical, simply is just not that exciting to look at constantly. It adds salt to the wound with the officer set for the colonials, as in multiple concept art examples of the past, they've looked quite frankly so much better. The rank and file is one thing, but to a certain extent an officer must look at least unique in some ways now compared to the common soldier, even with the modern army, for identification purposes. I also want to point out here that the current in-game staff model uniform has a much nicer tunic coat on that model, and I honestly think it would be better for the colonial officer than what we have currently worn on the torso at the moment. So I will begin with my usual suggestions of not only reconsidering some point in the near future of reworking some elements of both uniforms so they can feel a bit more iconic. For starters, with the colonial officer, I suggest the addition of either something resembling a British Army Second World War officer's tunic blouse coat, or maybe something along the lines of the Imperial Russian Army officer's traditional tunic shirt. With the addition of these flared light brown army dispatch rider style gloves and first world war leather field boots the colonial officer will certainly look a lot more professional and separate from the other ranks while still maintaining its iconic spartan look as for the warden officer more or less the developers have nailed that look on the first try by emulating some of the concept and player art as well as historical examples but i do think there are one or more two things that should be added as well one of which is the crime for both the warden officer not having their own separate ceremonial or sidearm swords, which could easily be some sort of 19th century style cavalry sabre, and with the other suggestion being perhaps a random chance of the infamous bright red trousers of the past showing up with some players, just as sort of a historical in-joke maybe? For both sets of this uniform, I would also consider moving the pistol ammunition boxes on the belts to the side or the front rather than the back for easy access too. I also feel that mechanics-wise, these uniforms could have been used for so much more than simply just making squad leader regiments noticeable and comedy team killing. Maybe in the future they'll expand a little bit more on these mechanics, but for me personally, this has landed with a sad fud. I can see them barely being used once novelty wears off, and I hope the developers give them wider functions with other roleplay uniforms in the future. And with that, for now, I believe we are done covering these newly released uniform sets, and at least for a few months, this video series will be in rest, waiting for another batch of uniforms to be really to come out into the game. Until then, stay safe and try not to die whilst leading your soldiers from the front into death or glory. Thank you for watching, and please do take care.